We gotta test some batteries, 6S batteries! I even have this quad that Evan Turner sent me like 2 years ago for testing. It's still a lie, which is kinda crazy. No freaking way. That's my job. Testing 6S batteries is quite loud, I can't do it at home, so I showed up at our expert house, of course without asking. Strap quad to the table, put all PIDs to zero and... But first, let me call to my expert. Hello? Hey, what are you doing in here? What's even happening? Oh, what the hell? Get out of here! I know some of you just want to see the results right away. So it might not be very smart for YouTube algorithm, but I am not gonna play the game like Ooh, which batteries are better? I don't know. Make sure you watch all the way to the end with all the YouTube ads and the result will be shocking at the end. No. So there we go. Tattoo Arlion V5 is the best performing battery for racing and fast freestyle. Followed by Trio 533.com, which I believe is just .com V1, MCKV2.com and 533 budget battery. These three are very close. And the most psyche battery I tested is Pyrodron Graphene. The first four batteries are like a standard choice for racers for 2023. Pyrodron Graphene? I don't know why I picked it for testing. Because fuck you. That's why. Keep in mind that I tested not just one battery of each type, but I had four batteries of each type, so 20 batteries total. That is a lot of testing. So right now, in the middle of the video, before we're done, hit that like button, subscribe, leave some silly comment, and consider subscribing to my Patreon. Link in the description. So you can see that Pyro battery is the lightest battery here. Probably that's why it's not performing so good, but it's also not the cheapest one. It's quite pricey. 533 budget is the heaviest battery, but it's also the cheapest. Only 33 well, only $33 for the premium good performing battery. Ooh. Now, let's see my loud testing methodology and check out some plots. I have full throttle on the switch, Betaflight software RPM limiter set to 24,500. When a 5-inch 6S quad flies in the air, the RPM goes way higher than that. But when drone strapped to the table, it's much harder to spin motors. Also motors are getting crazy hot, even with 24,000 RPM. So for this setup, strap to the table 24,000 RPM allows to discharge battery in one minute, approximately. And this is what fast racers are getting on the track flying. So we're getting the same crazy stress level on the battery as if we were flying, except it's consistent and repeatable. Also because all PID sliders are zero, so quad doesn't try to stabilize itself on the table. So all motors are spinning equally with the same speed, 24,500. I have a video about RPM limiter, the link in the description. But for our purpose, RPM limiter also allow us to see the internal throttle that beta flat commands to the motors in order for them to maintain the same desired RPM. So as the battery sags, internal throttle automatically goes up. And that sort of mimics of what pilots has to do while they're flying to compensate battery sag. Of course, we're also black boxing current and voltage, the main thing. Then it was a whole day of testing, charging, discharging, blackboxing, documenting, thanks to Mr. Nice for assistance. At the end of the day, I also performed the quick super stress test of the batteries, where I discharged them to 2.9 volts per cell, then charged back, and then discharged to 1.0 volts per cell. Just trying to see how battery degrades if you discharge them too low, because, you know, we're all doing that. I've done it. I'm guilty. I'll probably do it again. But don't repeat our tests without adult supervising. That's dangerous. We had Brenda on the watch. After testing was done, I had to check and compare all the black boxes. There are like 50 files. Betaflight Black Box Explorer is quite cool. We are able to see some stuff here. For example, this is one of the MCK V2 batteries, a whole minute of RPM limited full throttle. Arming moment, disarming moment, and time access. You can see that RPM stays consistently at desired 24,500. Thanks to RPM limiter and Mr. Tanner, voltage slowly goes down from 25 volts to 19. As battery battery sags amperage goes up from approximately 65 amps to 75 amps plus minus calibration and beta flight. And also interesting to see that the internal calculated throttle slowly goes up as battery sags from approximately 66% all the way to 82%. From the amps and voltage we can calculate watts but who the hell even cares? 
tires. Because RPM limiter makes sure the quad does the same work over and over no matter which battery voltage we're at now. There is one problem with this app. We can't compare multiple logs with ease here. So I converted all black boxes to CSV files and made this Python plotting application. And we're not going to discuss its code because this is how you code in Python. And there we go, we have voltage plots for different batteries on the same picture. And you can see that our line V5 in red really stands out. It's not just holding for a longer time, but it's also maintaining higher voltage. And pyro battery in orange clearly stands out in a sad way. In fact, only pyro batteries are puffed after every test. And in this rare case, does not mean good. A little disclaimer, pyro batteries are the only batteries I had to pay for this test from my Patreon money. All the other batteries are generously provided by Gens Ace, 533 and Doccom. Thank you. So I could be a little bit biased and puffing these batteries on purpose. Interesting observation, it looks like pyro battery has less milliamps inside because it died faster, but it's actually not. The voltage drop causes current to grow because RPM limiter tries to maintain the same RPM. So in our test, weaker battery just has to give more amps and that's why it gives up faster. And the good battery doesn't drop voltage as fast and it's a good battery. And exactly the same thing happens when you're flying. If you have a weaker battery, it just has to give more throttle pumping these amps like my on the charger, all of the tested batteries showed capacity of approximately 12 to 1300 milliamp hours. And that is sadly less than what they're labeled. What a surprise. Or my chargers are not precise, who knows. Or I should have HV charged them, like a professional racer. But these are not HV batteries. Back to these plots, they're kind of not super descriptive. Yes, they're showing the absolute values of the voltage, but uh, instead we can take our line V5 battery as a best battery as 100% and then plot the relative voltage. And there we go, our line V5 is 100% all the time and the rest of the plots are just relative to 100. I think now it's easier to read the difference. That was my father's idea, he watches my videos so I can't curse too much. And now we can see that pyro battery is 3 to 4% difference with our line V5. 3% difference of total voltage doesn't sound like much, but now we know that that's the difference between puffed battery and not puffed battery. Now let's try to compare Doccom and 533 batteries, this trio. So 533 Doccom in blue for some reason for the first 30 seconds it performs better than the rest of the two batteries and for the first five seconds it's even better than our line v5 look at that so because of this it was nominated to be on the second place although later on it pretty much equalizes with mck v2 and 533 budget mck v2 is actually a little bit better here and that's why mck v2 was nominated to be on the third place in this video you might ask me Ivan, why are you not looking at this difference, at where these batteries are giving up? For example, here you can see that MCK V2 gave up first if we exclude pyro battery. And the difference is like 3 seconds. But remember, I had a bunch of these batteries and I plot a bunch of data. I'm just not showing you all the pictures. For example, this is another batch of batteries and different tests. And you can see that pyro battery in orange is still not good. Our line V5 is still very good. But this trio finishing order is different now. And in this test, even at the beginning, 533.com outperforming MCK mckv2 for only 10 seconds and then mckv2 is just dominating so it could be inconsistency of manufacturing or maybe my tests are not perfect so in some cases i can tell the difference and then i tell the difference and in some cases i can't tell the difference and then and then i can't devon you're making a lot of sense right now but that's why I said that our line v5 is the best this trio is very close and the pyro battery is Sorry, Brian. Now, just for fun, let's see how different batteries behave when we discharge them to 2.9 volts per cell. Nothing really new here. All right. Now we want to see how this run affects all the future runs. So we got to compare this one with the next one. So here's our line V5, three consecutive runs, relative voltage to the first run. Because the first run was normal, then the second run is just a tiny bit worse than the first run still worse but the second run was down to 2.9 volts affecting the third run a lot so you can see here is almost two percent less voltage and it's also 10 seconds faster to discharge this battery so obviously don't discharge our line v5 too low you do it twice and then it's a goggles battery now mck v2 battery second run is pretty much identical to the first run even somehow a little bit better but the moment you discharge it to 2.9 volts per cell then the next run will be noticeably slower it's like less than one percent difference here 
here, but it's something. And you lose three seconds. Now Docom 533 battery. This is a lot. First and second run are pretty much identical, but then after you discharge the 2.9 volts per cell, it drops like good 3%. So don't do that. Pyro battery. Here we have only two plots because, well, the battery didn't survive discharging to 2.9 volts. It's just exploded. Yep. Budget 533 battery. Obviously, it degrades too, but not as much. Approximately like our line V5 battery. Don't take these plots too close to your heart because I've done them only with one battery of each type. The last fun test I've done is discharging batteries to 1.0 volts per cell. That was already a deep evening. I was so tired. Sorry, I didn't film any of the explosions, but I, I just filmed consequences. Oh. Our line V5. Pretty spectacular puff. I have never seen that in my entire life. And the only battery that survived that 1.0 volts per cell at high amps was mckv2.com. Well, that's something. The next day, I even flown the same battery mckv2 on the racing course, and it was all right. So we can probably say that mckv2 holds the abusing a little bit stronger. Maybe because mckv2 has slimmer cells, but they're a little bit wider. Although it's dangerous. Don't abuse your batteries. Yeah, try to tell that to Minchin. Some personal experience. I like our line V5, but I think it tends to lose a cell a little bit more often. But Jense has been pretty cool replacing faulty batteries if you email to them properly. MCKV2 so far holds strong for me, as well as all these trio. Couple of lot cells here and there, but nothing really concerning. <sighs> $39 per battery. A little bit about integrated battery protection. Our line V5 has metal plates here and there, and that's it. This trio has similar metal plates here and there, but they also bend over the corners, so that's extra protection. Nice. Pyro battery. It has plastic plates from the sides and uh, nothing to protect from this side. And plastic, obviously I haven't flown this pack, so I can't tell if maybe plastic protection is better. Listen, this is what you're going to do next. You're going to like and you're going to subscribe. Do it! This is going to be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing to my Patreon. The link in the description. And as always, see you in the next video. If I'm not lazy. Yeah.